Welcome back to Authentic Alphas. It's your boy Allende, and I have this young lady here. What is your name? Hi, my name is Chef Juliana. And this is Melly. <laughs> <laughs> so well behaved dog. She tries. What is the uh, breed? Uh, she's a Sheltie. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's Shetland sheep dog. They're like lassies. Right. Well, that's what I thought it was, yeah. but then I was like, that dog is tiny. Yeah. But it's an adult. Yeah, that's it. That's all for her. She Bite looked, size? Yeah, a little perfect building Okay. Pup. All right, so um, how old are you? Where are you from? Um, I'm 22 years old. How old am I? I'm 24. Oh, my God. I keep forgetting. How did you mix up 22? <laughs> I just work. I forget how many years old I am. I'm turning 25 this year, guys. Whoa. Oh, my God. I'm 24. Um... I'm from Florida, Broward area mostly. Mm -hmm. Moved down here to Miami for college and then kind of never left. No, okay. Mm -hmm. I can't complain about that. Um, uh, single, married, dating, divorced? Married, happily married, going on, what was it, four years now? Yeah. Damn, you've been married since you were 20? Yeah, uh, yeah. I got married 20 right before, like, my birthday's in August, mm -hmm. right before I turned 21. So that was a big joke because um, my husband's from Haiti. Okay. And um, when his, pretty much his work visa and all his educational visas expired, he kind of looked at me and he goes, well, we have two oh, options. Oh, shit. I'm either going back or we're getting married. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, guess we're getting married. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, yeah it it's, it's, uh, it happens like that. I, I, Known of a few people that that was the situation. They were dating somebody, and um, yeah, that person didn't want to lose them. Mm. Yeah, sometimes it takes a baby. Sometimes it just takes a, a good relationship. Yeah. So, because I was gonna ask you, like, in a time when um, so many women are like adverse to getting married, especially young, like, what made you get married? But I guess that answers the question. But I guess what I should ask you is. Um, no, it was not in the plan. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, was it something you guys were probably going to do anyway? He always wanted to get married young, mm. but he's a few years older than me. He's um, mm. 28 right now. 27, sorry. Right. Uh, turning 28. Uh, and he always wanted to get married around the time he did. I never in my life wanted to get married at age 20. I used to watch Say Yes to the Dress, and my mind would blow when these girls would be like, I'm 19, I'm 21, mm. I'm 20. And I'm just like, oh. I always thought I would finish school, have a settled career, be like maybe 25 by the time I got married. But we were already living together. I really, I, we agreed on so many things of how we wanted to raise our kids, um, our political ideas, how we think of society, how we think of what the norms are, um, movies we like to watch, music we can listen to, places, mm -hmm. things we like to do. We agreed on uh, so much of what I thought were like the core important things in a relationship and going mm -hmm. forward in life that- Movies are very important. Yeah, I figured, I'm like, you know what? what you <laughs> movies are very important. Okay, movies are very arguing important. Arguing <laughs> over what to watch. Me, I'm really complacent. I'll watch just about anything. I really love bad movies mm -hmm. and he has really he likes good bad, taste in movies. He likes bad movies too? No, oh, he, likes, oh, okay, he has really okay. good taste in movies, but he likes a lot of the superhero hold on, movies. Hold on, but what is his favorite movie though? Uh, he likes, it's not an American film. It's a French film called <laughs> Okay, for the record, how do you spell A bunch of R's. It's just R's. And <laughs> it's... <laughs> I know that's not what's on the movie cover. It is, and it was really just Earth. So it's like, how do you how do you put that in alphabetical order? You put that between. <laughs> in the R. It's, oh my God. I, I would put it first. Like, is it, the, is it the first or does it go? I would put it first. Does it go with the other words that start with R, R? Because no, how many words start with two R's? Why would I want to do that? Like for me, it goes just as if it were all numbers. It's just going first. Like it's gonna go in the R category, so, yeah. But so hold on, you watch this movie with subtitles, or you like? Oh yeah, you I watched it with subtitles. Oh okay, yeah. I thought but you it were, was really funny. That you were first forced to learn Creole or something? Nah, you I know mean, I'm trying. I was actually learning French when we were, before we had even started dating. But don't ask me to speak. That's French. funny I'm because uh, <laughs> I, I was kind of sort of considering learning French because my ex-wife spoke several languages. Oh. Italian, French, English, and some Spanish, and I was like, oh. I think learning language is a beautiful thing just because it helps you connect with people. Like, one thing for speak mm. Spanish does for me is whenever, I don't care what Hispanic country you're from, if you speak Spanish, oh, yeah. we're gonna talk Spanish, or we're gonna get, hit it off. You get, treated, you get treated completely different, man, trust me, I know. The amount of times I've gone in somewhere and I'm trying to get something done and the people aren't, like, cooperative, they speak English, they're not cooperative, and then I'll have my girl talk to them and then all of a sudden it's magic. Yeah, it's like, really? Ever. It's like really like, now, now, that? now yeah. you can do. 
<laughs> now I can have it my way, but uh, you know, when I was just speaking the English, they, they were like, <laughs> there was low energy, there was an attitude, mm -hmm. so it definitely makes a difference. But um, yeah, because we were going to Montreal, you know, relatively often. So the thing is, in Montreal, if you if you don't speak French, they will damn near ignore you. But yet they speak English. They speak perfect English. <laughs> but you know, for like yeah, for whatever reason, they're they're very anal about it um, in Montreal, and um, it's actually a a law that the kids have to learn how to speak French in Montreal. Isn't like it? like just in Qu Quebec in general. Yeah, because isn't yeah. that like a French province? Exactly. I don't so, understand it. Yeah, but to make it a legal thing, and I think it's more of a pride thing, like. We're French. So I mean, we gotta, I guess it's similar to Puerto Rico because in Puerto Rico, it's the same thing. The kids have to learn English. But I think the, the difference between having to learn English or French is uh, English is more of a prominent language in the world. I agree. Like, for, for but that's, Chinese people to, pro to be able to progress in business, they have to learn English. But that's what makes it a benefit. For example, if you speak uh, French, and just like how you mentioned... Um, Chinese, like a Chinese uh, dialect. If you could speak the Mandarin, if you if you speak Yo. if English is your first language and you could speak Mandarin, you have there's no reason to not be a millionaire. You know what's funny, no, no, I'm not exaggerating. There's no reason to not be a millionaire because just that ability makes you so relevant in business transactions. There's so many people that will hire you just to be the middleman between between a Chinese company and an American company mm -hmm. because something's always lost in translation when dealing with the Chinese, like always. And you have to be really careful because in Chinese and in Japanese, uh, I believe it's the same. I, I might be a little confused with Chinese, but um, cursing isn't necessarily using cuss words. It's talking it's how you talk like there's proper mm -hmm. speak and then if you talk like you would like i don't know when you go with your friends whatever when you go out meet with your friends uh, how you're not speaking formally anymore that'd be considered cuss language mm -hmm. or whatever so it you have to really know because how to, you like you, you you have such little respect for the person you're talking yeah, to you're like, yeah yeah like, i'm not even gonna speak it's like English. it's like the difference between saying this elderly person or like this old guy and it's like, oh, how dare you? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, 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 yeah, I, I've heard something like that. It, it's in that in the culture, it's less about the word and and more about the level of respect you have for the person that you're talking about, how you refer to them. Whereas here, it definitely would have to be like an actual curse word yeah. for it to like be yeah. offensive. That makes sense. Unless you're like rolling your eyes mid sentence mm -hmm, for mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how many people are gonna try to get through there, and it's not, <laughs> it's not working. Yeah, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to tell That's them. What it is. Yeah, so um, we were in the lobby, guys, and I was talking to to an old boy in the building, and he was just asking me some stuff about some podcasts, and you know, he's you know aware of the Fresh and Fit podcast, and she overheard it, and she was like. <laughs> What did you what did, what did you say? You were like, uh, oh, you know those guys? Aren't yeah. they corny? Do you think they're fake? I think they're pretty fake. There's no way. What's this guy? Fresh. There you go. Fresh. There's no oh, way. Oh god, girls, bro. There's no way. Yeah, her 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 words, guys, not mine. You know, <laughs> not that I don't agree. Not that so many people. Do. It's just interesting how so many people that don't know each other have the exact same uh, estimation of these guys. But uh, I think. Their fan base is just so young and dumb and hopeless and inexperienced. Like, they're the only numb nuts that don't see it because it seems like any adult, well, any female <laughs> and any adult male, like 16 year old girls know these guys are a joke, but um, you know, any adult male instantly can identify that these guys are full of shit. But um, I just thought that was interesting that that was the first question you asked me was like, <laughs> like aren't they fake I as hell? I had to know from an insight. Oh, because she doesn't know, know that I know them personally. Yeah. She was like, she was like, what do you think of them? I was like, think? Yo, <laughs> she was I like, do you think that they're fake? I was like, I know. <laughs> I just wanted somebody to know who like oh, knows, God. knows them because I'm like, I don't know what's for the cameras. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's genuine. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they hit up a script with these girls in the back like, hey, you should say this, this, and this. Yeah, there's this a lot yeah, there's a lot of people that uh, that I guess would think that because they're thinking to themselves, these girls can't be for real. No, a lot um, of them are for. I, I know a but couple it's, of yeah. girls they brought on. They're yeah, not, they but, are for real. But it's not, you know, it's not orchestrated or anything like that. That's one thing I will say. Like they don't. There's nothing like that going on. In fact, they 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 are just meeting the girls. Well, nowadays, 
at least half, maybe half the girls, because they keep repeating the same girls over and over again. Like Myron went out of his way to develop uh, regulars, which is something he was trying to get me to do, and I just mm -hmm. wasn't interested in it because I felt like, what value does yeah, that bring? Right when you're when you're uh, pedestalizing certain girls and Not having even, them come on the show, yeah. but what he was trying to do wasn't about that, you know. He this is what the, he does. What he does, he always tries to like. Um, you know, he always he always tries to flip the narrative. So his incentive is, I can't get uh, new girls frequently. Like I can't keep up. Um, you know what I mean with the consistency of having new girls every night. But I don't want to admit that. So the way that he flips the narrative is, oh, the subs really like this particular girl. Mm -hmm. Oh man, they were filling you in the comment section. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to get her to come back on. So he flips it like he's catering to his audience by having this bitch on two, three times a week. Mm. No, guys, he's, he's he's not catering to the audience. He can't get two, three different girls to sit in that seat and still have that amount of girls. But it's just funny to me because his own insecurity is working against him because it's like, dude, you don't have to have that many girls every night. Like you're, over, you're overly trying to prove a point. You're overcompensating because you're trying so hard not to be exposed for a motherfucker that can't get women to genuinely come on sporadically. So instead, you're putting fat girls in that seat. You're putting ratchet girls in that seat. You're putting ghetto chicks in there. You're putting anorexic chicks in there. Pretty much all the women who right. are an embarrassment. To and, then, and then you're repeating the same above average looking girls. Like, okay, we, we build a rapport with this girl. Now I'm going to have her come on six times in this month. And if I have three more girls that are going to come on four or five or six times in the same month, that keeps the seats filled. And now I can perpetrate this image right. of we, we, we got so many girls here guys yeah. but when I was there they did have so many girls yeah. there guys so he's just trying too hard to keep up that influx mm -hmm. and the reason why I say it works against him is it makes the show like unorganized mm -hmm. because you have too many girls they're talking over each other there's no organization you would have been better off just having three or four girls a night and just keeping it at that. Yeah. And then... And make it more substantial. I was just about to say that. Actually have some legit conversations. Yeah. So, um, you know, I would never put words in anybody else's mouth. So, if you, there was something that you liked about the show, I wouldn't even argue it. Because you mentioned that you and your husband actually had, had watched the show. So, yeah. what, were, what were some of the valuable things or what did you think the value was when you, when you did have an interest for it? I, I like the fact that it was trying to humble women because I think a big issue nowadays is the ego that women carry. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I shouldn't have to work. I shouldn't have to clean. I shouldn't have to cater to a man. Why should he tell me what to do? Why, why can't you compromise? Why is it that if you're expecting this man to pay all your bills, get you your hair and nails done, feed you and your friends, take you and your friends out on the mm -hmm. boat and do all these things that you can't make sure he has a... Uh, hot food to come home to. You can't make. You can't keep the house clean. That, that's actually not like, a compromise, though. I think. I think women have just there's been. There's balance to life. There are roles to play, and what's so bad? And why do we have to demonize that role? And like, you can do it. You don't have to do it all, but you can do it both. You can do both. You can be a career mm -hmm. woman, have a happy husband, pay a lady to keep the house clean, and then be a good mom to your child. Like. Yeah, but see, the thing is, is that there's just so much misconceptions on what marriage is, how it functions, what is the purpose of it, what are the principles. There's so, there's so much confusion because these, these young ki kids, like these young people, well, not even young people anymore because we, we, have, we have plenty of you know, people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s that, that haven't seen what marriage looked like because it's been broken up for so many generations now. But these women have been programmed to think that like all those things are like serving the man. And the, the irony is, everything it's that you just a mentioned actually... Cycle. It comes no, back. not even. Everything that you just mentioned actually serves the woman. Let me give you some examples. First of all, women's um, nurturing and caring and empathy for men has never been about the guy. It's always been a selfish act and a selfish behavior. Even having children has always been a selfish behavior. Why do you right? say that? For example, men want children because they want to be able to pass on not only the legacy, but all the property that they've acquired, all the work that they did, how they established themselves in the world. Okay. It means nothing if you don't have someone to pass it on to. And propagating your genes. 
so majority of, 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 of wanting to be a father, the desire to have children is actually from selfish intentions. Then when you look at a female, a lot of it is just simply having someone to give attention t uh, to you or to, to reciprocate attention. Um, it validates a lot of women, right? Okay. It also um, gives them a certain type of emotional satisfaction, obviously, which is why that baby bug is always, you know, is always itching. This is why you see women having pets and like putting them in strollers and <laughs> dressing up in gap baby clothes and whatnot. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because that yeah. urge is there, yeah. right? Yeah. It needs to be satisfied. But more importantly, children grow up and take care of their parents. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have, you know, the desire to, to spend your last days in a retirement home or in hospice or whatever, who do you think would be taking care of you? So, and there's nothing unique about that. That's since the beginning of time, people have always understood, I will get old and elderly and I will have to rely on the younger members of the tribe, the family, the village, whatever, right? So now the government, as of recently in human history, has started trying to implement some type of um, a system to deal with old people. But mm -hmm. that's just the government trying to create a need for them. Mm -hmm. That's the trick of the government, guys. Okay, govern your mental. So the government's whole um, objective is to control people's mind, to control your mental. And the way they do that is they create the illusion of a need for them. If it wasn't for governments, we'd be in perpetual war. No, because of governments, we're in perpetual war. If it wasn't for governments, there'd be poverty everywhere. No, because of governments, poverty exists. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the, tr the, the trick that they do is they make it seem like without us, you motherfuckers would be hopeless. That's what you, you, want. Need, you need us, you and know what I'm saying? What would you do with your old people if it wasn't for us? Mm -hmm. Well. <laughs> the younger generation would take care of the old people, dumbass. And we wouldn't have to work all the damn time if you didn't tax us the way you do and misappropriate the funds the way you do and create a, the type of capitalism we have. Because capitalism isn't the issue. Mm -hmm. It's the way the government controls the capital, or the way the capitalism controls the government, I yeah. should say, um, you know, is, is, is the issue. So even their presence in marriage is nefarious what they're trying to do giving women the vote right so all of it leads back um to selfish agendas when you're dealing with the government or when you're dealing with individual human beings mm -hmm. the thing is is that as a human being you can have um you know sel selfish uh, intentions and still uh interact with other people in a way that is still mutual it's still mutualism because think about it the children need to be raised by somebody mm -hmm. and then the old people need to be taken care of by somebody mm -hmm. so even though you're using each other there still is some mutualism there. And then what happens is the love is going to develop in that process. So you have young people now that think like marriage was about love. Marriage was never about love. No. Now, if you look at the most um, wealthy families, you look at people that have power control, when they married their young people, love was nowhere in the equation. And those are the people that have the power yeah. and the freedom. Mm -hmm. So if they weren't even getting married for love, what do you make? What makes you think that every class or every status of people under that was doing it for love? It was never about that's, that. That's what I was. That's what that was one thing I really liked that you said. Um, what's the purpose of marriage? And I think the purpose of marriage is raising the future generations, of knowing course. that you have a duty to this to this community. And if you don't want to partake in that duty, that's fine. Don't mm -hmm. get married. People, people or are maybe a resource. If you want to get married, that's fine because it is right. a lot more cost efficient to be married. Mm -hmm. you, you got your splitting bills, you're splitting chores, right. you're splitting all everything. Right. But it's a it pe people you, themselves are a, a resource, mm -hmm. right? So there's like even like a content creator that I like. Uh, just of recently, I started following him, and I'll talk about him in the future. I'm not gonna mention him just this minute, but soon enough, eventually, I'm gonna have him on, right? And his whole channel is it centers around prepping, preparation, because there are a lot of things coming. And I don't talk about these things because it's going to go over 90% of people's heads. It's just not a good idea to go down that route right now. As my channel develops and I gain more exposure and I have more of a platform and more leverage, then I'll be able to get into the type of topics that I really want to discuss and what the most high would want me to do with said platform. But if I talk about these things now, there will be no platform. I already already know that, right? <laughs> but so a lot of these issues... I was never wrong about them. The problem was I was too far ahead of my time. For example, when I used to talk about, you know, getting the vax and I used to talk about computer chips and all this kind of stuff, I started in 97. 
<laughs> so you, so you, so you, you can imagine how crazy people thought I was talking about these type of things well, at that saying. time, yeah. because at, at that time the technology was nowhere where it could even be per, like perceivable. Like that's yeah. not even possible, yeah. right? But now it's a reality. Yeah. So now you know all the kids I went to high school with have to say, "Yo, bro, you were right. No shit. No shit." Mm -hmm. Told me I was crazy. Mm -hmm. 97, 98, 99. You know, I was crazy. When I was hanging out with Freemasons and the type of shit that they would put me on to, oh, oh, I was crazy when I tried to share it with my peers, yeah. right? So by 2000, I just gave up. Mm -hmm. By 2000, I just said, I'm gonna submerge myself in research and I'm gonna keep it to myself. Mm -hmm. If it's not my best friend, I'm not gonna talk about it because mm -hmm. he was on the same shit, mm -hmm. right? His, his grandparents were Black Panthers. So we had a different type of awareness than the other guys. So as far as prepping, like I always knew prepping was a thing. Like I always knew have that room full of bottled water. You must have really good books. Uh, like, you know, your medical supplies, you know what I'm saying? Learn how to do CPR, learn these type of things, learn how to start a fire without any type of lighter or lighter fluid or whatever. Know how to hunt, know how to fish. Like I grew up knowing that these things were important. And while I'm doing these things, you know, my grandfather was all about like the Boy Scouts and surviving and being able to farm your own land and knowing how to deal with livestock. So I've always known that this shit is going to be important. The thing is, is that when you start prepping too early, when you're on your, like your Noah shit and you're trying to tell everybody else, Yo, I'm building this ark because everybody's going to tell you you're nuts. So sometimes when you're too far ahead, you're going to have a hard time getting anybody to see eye to eye. Mm. Right. So right now, this guy's thing is all about trying to prepare people for this collapse that's coming. And it, mm. it, it's, it's coming like this whole conflict in Ukraine. Everybody's acting like, oh, my God, can you believe, can believe? like, dude, we, we saw this coming from a decade ago. Facts. Right. If you know how to understand these these things and how the governments um, initiate this and how they orchestrate this script from, a, from such a ways out, even the even the covid thing, like it, if you were up on game, you would have seen that coming from so long ago. And if you were interested in the type of laws that are being passed while we're distracted with social media and whatever's on the internet, like, like these people are signing stuff, mm -hmm. right? So like Agenda 2030, like it's Agenda 2030 now. When they first tried to push that bill, it wasn't even supposed to be Agenda 2030. It was like Agenda 20 something, like in the early, like right around now is when they were trying to kick that off. Right. So for whatever reason, they had to postpone it. And now right. it's 2030 that they plan to make this particular agricultural change. There's so many people that still haven't heard of it. You haven't heard of it, but all the countries have already signed off on it. Hmm. From like, I think, um, I think like 2017 or something like that. So they been had already signed off on this shit. But it won't affect us for another decade, right? So it's interesting because the people that signed off on it most likely won't even be in office mm -hmm. when it comes. Mm -hmm. When that happens, the people that are going to survive, that are going to be able to not necessarily be part of the system, are going to be the people that were prepping. It's going to be people that were learning how to camp, that were learning how to live off the land that might have been preparing some type of bunker or some type of shelter. So what dude was trying to say with that is this, like, listen, a lot of you are having a selfish mentality and thinking, um, I'm not going to tell anybody I'm prepping. I'm not going to tell anybody I'm, I'm storing resources and I'm bulking up on, on supplies because, oh, I don't want to get robbed. He's like, that's the wrong way of thinking. You need to be selecting the people that you're going to survive with from now. And the strength will be in the numbers. And he's making some really good points. He's like, you could have all the shit saved up in the world. What happens when you twist your ankle? And then what? If you're by yourself and you get hurt, what good is your supplies? You're going to bleed out. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. So we have to start thinking in those terms because when the lights are out, the internet is down, there's no Walmart open, there's no Target, right? What do you think your greatest assets are going to be? It's going to be other people. Other people with some type of skill set. If you know a chick that's a nurse, she's gonna be highly valuable at that, at that point in time. You got somebody that's a doctor, very important, right? So I say all of that as to say that marriage was always a way that two people maximize on their value to the group. This is why women are born with value. So in this community, like, like people say that and it's like the end. 
It's like a period. That's the end of the sentence. Oh, women are born with inherent value and acting like it's a bad thing. And it's like some type of men versus women type thing. And you got these butt hurt guys that they sound like they're jealous when they're talking. It's like, so what do you want to do? You want to cry? You want a cookie? Right. It's not fair that men aren't born with value. The reason why women are born with value is because they have a womb. So as long as you keep them safe and healthy, they can provide you with people and people are the greatest asset to the group is more people. Right? Makes sense. So if you can get one person to become extremely good at something, that skill set is the value of it is expiring as that person is aging out. Hmm. But if you have new people born that he can teach that to, if he or she can teach that skill set to a group of young people, now you just went from having a doctor to having doctors. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. just went from having a hunter to having hunters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A master fisher to having fishers. Mm -hmm. So this, guys, is why women have inherent value from birth. That value benefits the entire group, including men too. So it's not something to be like, it's not fair. Like, not at all. But the guys... They have the luxury as well as the disadvantage of having to develop this value by figuring out what am I naturally good at and how can I become great at this so now I'm extremely valuable to the group, right? Mm -hmm. So give me my virgins, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Give me my nice little hut, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I want a corner view office, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm big shit over here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So that's something that guys should embrace. You should embrace that journey and that process of figuring out what your purpose is and ultimately what your value is to other people. So for you guys, it's like, I don't have any friends. You don't have any friends because you're not good at anything. <laughs> I'm just being real, I'm just being real, right? I'm, I, you know, I'm 32 and I'm a virgin. You're a virgin because you're not good at anything, right? Or you're not leveraging what you're good at. You're, you're not... You're not showcasing what you're good at and finding a way to make that useful to other people. Just like you could be talented, but you have no business mind. Right. So now you're either useless in general or you get exploited. Yeah. One, one or the other, right? Yep. Which is fine. You don't have to be excellent at business. No, you can learn. You can but, always learn. No, not even. But if you're very talented, then you need to match up with someone that's really good at business. Mm -hmm. Now that person can manage you. Right, right. Right? Yeah. But how do you come to be able to trust that person? your networking ability. And you can't start networking too young. The younger you start networking, the better. That's something that, that I learned from my grandfather and boy, is, was he right. Because it's always a good time to network. Mm -hmm. But the later on that you network, is the less genuine it's gonna be. Yeah, it's more desperate now. Now because you need it. Not only that, but now it's two adults engaging that both have a selfish agenda. Mm -hmm. Consciously or subconsciously. Mm -hmm. But if you networked at a younger age, it would be based on, that's my day one. Mm -hmm. We used to play in the sandbox. Mm -hmm. We used to play on the same little league team. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's a different type of relationship. It's like, it ain't even about how much money I'm going to make with you. It ain't even about what you could do for me. It's that you my dog from way back. So as kids, we have to be mindful of that. And that's something that we don't think of, to, like the young people today don't think that because it's just another symptom of taking the men out the house. Because when the fathers aren't there, the fathers are who teach networking. You think women are teaching networking to their kids? No, definitely not. Women can barely right. talk to each other. No, they can, but the thing with women, no, honestly. Women's, women's relationships and networking is on autopilot. Oh, hey, how are you, girl? Oh, I love your nail polish. Oh, I love your shoes. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's autopilot. It's autopilot. It is. Right? There's not, right, there's not right, actually right, yeah. an agenda there. She's not consciously mm -hmm. thinking or planning mm -hmm. or nothing. She's just being nice to another female because of in-group preference. Right. That's it. Her need to be liked. That's oh, all that that's, that's about. But when you see men interacting with each other, they're already probing each other. Yes. What, what, motherfucker, what you do? Mm -hmm. Where you work at? Mm -hmm. Who you know? Where you from? Right? And then that's what that exchange is about. Right. It's intentional. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're a younger guy and you, you're, you're just playing your mind, your business, you got your little you know, toys, or your trucks or whatever. And your dad's talking to another guy. You're learning something indirectly, subconsciously. You're learning something because why is my dad always talking to other men? And why is it always so short when that other man is useless? Mm -hmm. And then why is it always ending exchanging contacts and all that kind of stuff when that older man is useful? Mm -hmm. So you learn it without even realizing you're learning it. Mm -hmm. This is why fathers are so important, because what children pick up is not 
like spelt out. It's not like, hey, get your textbooks, it's time to learn something. No, just being around adults, kids are learning. Even when the kids are being ignored, they're still learning. It's like, yo, go over there, go play, go be quiet and go play. But that kid is still picking up something because what is my dad doing over there? Why is my dad not paying me no mind? What's more important than me? So what are they doing over there? What are they talking about? So you're learning, right? And when the boys meet other men through their father, that's always important. So when you're doing the single mother thing, the kid is missing out on all these experiences. Yeah. And now here I am on the other end of that, trying to help guys that are the product. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, of, that, of, of, of that loss. Because when I'm listening to these young guys and what they're explaining to me and the issues that they're dealing with, every time it just brings me back to single mother. It, brings back to, it keeps bringing me back to that. Yeah. This is, these, are, these experiences that they missed right. is why they're like, bro, I'm 24 and I don't know how to network and I don't know how to meet other guys. And, and that's why they talk like that too. Right. Like, oh, that's what I'm about to say. Talking, dude, like, I, 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 like dude, that. I had a consult call yesterday. I don't know why this isn't working, girl. This isn't... <laughs> I had a consult call that was supposed to be an hour, ended up being three hours. And first of all, from, from like, from dude first answered the phone, He's like, uh, hey, hey, man, uh, hey, 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 Ayende, um, hey, hey, man, thanks for calling. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I was in Miami, you know, a couple, I'm like, all right, like, like already, already, I can see, I can see what, you know, okay, this is the first flag, right? So, you're not assertive whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Mind you, this dude's over six foot, right? But the assertiveness is, is, is non-existent. What a waste. Right? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I ended up telling him, right? Oh. You know what I'm saying? So, but, but, but the point is, we can fix this. We, can, we, we have to first recognize what it is, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to let him know that right off the bat, if you're talking to another man, if you're talking to me, and you're trying to do business, I'm already not feeling you. Right. I'm already not feeling you. Right. I can't be confident in you because you're not confident in you. And the crazy thing is, he could be great at what he does. He just doesn't know how to project that. And what's a con artist? What's a bullshitter? That's somebody that's the opposite. Can project the, the bad enough. Right. They ain't got uh -huh. shit to back it up. But when they project, people are like, uh-huh. I see. All right. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, well, I let's see a do lot that. Of this in business nowadays because most of the people I do do business with are older men. And right off the bat, in the beginning, I had a lot of issues because I would talk and I would be really timid. Mm. I didn't know. I was shy. I, I was afraid of coming off as young and inexperienced. And by being afraid of being young and experienced, you I came off as young and experienced. <laughs> But now it's, I, I have the, even like when I shake a man's hand, I shake it with like, like a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I shake it like a man. I talk with my, like with my chest or whatever. Mm -hmm. Say, speak with your chest. I Say do it with your chest. Yeah, just like that. Yep. And it's, it's funny because you can see how their whole demeanor will change. A man will go mm -hmm. from trying to analyze you to, un, to, oh, I can cut mm -hmm. her some slack a little bit. Let me actually listen to this person has to say. Right. And it's, it's, Yeah. It's a gap. Yeah. It's a gap there. And there's so many guys that they, they're so lost because they don't even know what's missing. And that's the thing. It's hard to miss something that you were never aware of to begin with. Mm -hmm. Right? You can't miss it if you didn't even know it exists. But you do know something is missing. Mm -hmm. So, and how it affects the, the girls is that women say things like, I don't need a man confidently. And the reason why they're saying that is because... They're operating under the misconception of what men bring to the table in the first place. They never even knew because the man was not there. So all they can identify with is that my mother had to work and my mother had to struggle. And mommy always because, said, I don't need no man. So right, be, I know I right because, no man. because the dad wasn't there. So the only, the only thing that they see missing is the money. The mm -hmm. finance. So they think, oh, I make my own money, therefore I do not need a man. Right. But what they don't realize is leadership was, lead was missing from your house. Self-discipline was missing from your house. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Problem solving yeah. was missing from your house. These are the issues I'm trying right. to overcome in my 20s. Yeah. Right. Ooh, Indep yeah. Ind independence was missing from your house. Right? You think your mother was independent because she went out and worked. Okay, well, who, who, who was watching you then when your mom was out working, stupid? Because if there was a babysitter, oh, there goes the independence. If you were always at after school programs and whatnot, oh, there goes the independence. So your mother was not independent because she went and made work. She went and worked and made money, but now she had to depend on something else. Whereas if the mother and the father was there and the father went to work, now the house is independent. Because the mother is taking care of the kids while the father goes out and gets resources. So within the family unit, you're independent. 
And if someone does need to watch the kids, that would be grandmothers, grandfathers, uncles, aunts. Right? Mm -hmm. In my family, there was no such thing as babysitters or after school programs or anything like that. No fucking strangers watch the kids. Are you crazy? And then when your kids get touched on, you wonder how that happened. Right. Now the mother's in denial. No, right. it couldn't be that. No, it was that. It no. was that. And it was worse because the kid probably doesn't even remember most of the things that happened because their, their mental is blocking it mm -hmm. out. That selective uh, memory loss is, is in play now. And it's going to take a therapist to get to get that up out of them. There's so much trauma. And the trauma is there, why? Because you thought you, you could go work and you, di you didn't need a man. So there's a lot of women that will have this epiphany moment when they get around a dude like me or certain other dudes that's filling in certain blanks and they're like, wait, this, this is a thing? It's like, yeah, that's what happens when you got a real man. I never knew that. Yeah, you never knew that. You never knew that men brought those type of qualities, that men did those type of things. It never crossed your mind because you never saw it. Because if you grew up with it, when you became a grown woman, you would know that that's missing. Mm -hmm. You would be like, oh, I need this in my house. I need somebody that's going to do this, that, that, that. I need somebody that's going to take care of these things because they're going to happen in life. There's so many things that happen in life where a woman is trying to deal with it. And really what it was is that would have been one for your man. That would have been one. That, that's a situation when you say, hey, you know what? You need to speak to my husband. But instead, the woman's the one having that conversation. And there's so many times that I'll be in like a Home Depot or something like that. And there'll be a couple. And the woman is the one that's doing the speaking. The woman's the one that's talking to the, to the rep and she's making the decisions. And I'm like, why would the woman be taking this one? Why is this dude so beta? Well, here's the thing. He also grew up in a house that didn't have a man. So he don't even realize when it's him that's supposed to be up. Like, yo, this one's you. This one's mm -hmm. you. You go do that. This one's mm -hmm. you, buddy. You know what I mean? He didn't know that and neither did, neither did she. So she's not realizing that even if that was your decision to make, you make it and the man is the one that is going to say it. Mm -hmm. Like you and him can discuss it in private and then he's the one that says this is, this is what we want to do. So you have all these situations where everything's out of whack and we've lost the tradition now. Because even though these men grow up and say, I want to be a better father than my dad was, or I want to be present because my dad wasn't there, he's still lacking in the mm -hmm. playbook. Mm hmm Right? Because he didn't go through it himself. So he's kind of fumbling around and trying to figure out, okay, what am I supposed to do in this situation? What am I supposed to say? Uh, how am I supposed to handle this? Uh, my daughter's having her first period. I'm not sure. Do I say something? Do I not say something? Should I tell my sister to get this one? What's going on here? And it's the same thing with the mothers when they're trying to raise the sons with no men. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing as far as her not even knowing what's missing. And right? it's tragic when women want to argue that that's not the case. And it's like, how? How? Well, if you can they're compare not even, the They're children, not even supposed to have that discussion. That. What do you mean? Like women don't even realize this is when you have no input. They don't even realize that. So if, if a chick is having issues with her son oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I'm, and I'm trying to weigh in on it and she's actually like going back and forth with me, it's like, wait, sis. Are you a man? Sis, this is when you shut the fuck up. Do you up. know how men Be operate? Right, because you, you, know you, need to you don't have a valid opinion here. You don't got it? Right. For her, for her to say, <laughs> oh, no, I don't need or I don't think I need or I don't feel like I need. It's like, no, 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 no. You have zero to say right now. No comment. Zip it up. And that's, because you can't. Exactly. And, it's, and it finds me really funny because a little bit the same women who want to complain about, oh, a man shouldn't talk about oh, what a woman can do with her body. Oh, my body, my choice. And it's like, mm, what about the man's body? Is it his choice now? Is it still his choice? And these situations are going to come. It's a, it's a matter of time. So as, as soon as she gets to saying, I don't need a man, and I, I'm just like looking at my watch. I'm like, okay, I'll see you in 14 years. Mm -hmm. I'll see you in 14 years. When your daughter's losing her virginity, I'll see you in 14 years. When the police call and say, we got your son down at the station, I'll see you in 14 years. Because in 14 years, what you're going to be saying is, you're going to live with your father. That's what you're going to be saying in 14 <laughs> years. It never fails. It's, yeah. It never fails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saying that now because they're small and manageable, but once they get older and they get their friends and their hormones start going, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to control them. And you're going to raise your voice. You're going to get mad. You're going to get angry. You're going to be threatening and none of it's going to work because you're not a man. Mm -hmm. You're not a disciplinarian, mm -mm. right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to be stuck. And when you're bringing other men around, it's going to affect them on a mental and emotional level. You're not going to be ready for that. Mm -hmm. it's say the whole thing is going to be, the whole thing is going to be out of whack. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And see, here's the thing that's crazy. When 
the mother and the father are married. Mm. All the kids see is love and some affection and some little kisses on the cheek and mommy and daddy kiss and mommy and daddy hug and oh, it's cute and that's it. Mm. They don't see no fooling around or hanky panky. They better right? not. <laughs> no, but you, you see what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Right, so right, when right. the mom and the dad are married, they're really careful with that. They're really delicate with that. When the kids are knocking on the door, mommy, what are you doing? Open the door. It's like, oh, fuck. Right, we, right. we can't do anything because of right. these damn kids. And then the kid comes in and then they act like they weren't doing anything. What were you doing? Oh, mommy and daddy were wrestling. We were just, you know, what do you want, kid? What do you need, <laughs> right? But yet when it's just a single mom, it's completely different now. Now it's the boyfriend comes around and it's like it's the kid, don't bother me my boyfriend exactly here. the kid's like what's going on and then the mom's like oh yeah go over there go play or go to sleep and whatever and it's like what, hold on there's no love there because mm-hmm. you, you you just you just started seeing this dude not so long ago so the kids so that so that's not what it is mm-hmm. then wait there's there's no affection there right mm-hmm. right but there's something going on in the room mm-hmm. do you see what I mean mm-hmm. so now it becomes trauma mm-hmm. rather than the kid learning the affection and the dynamic between a man and a woman when they're in a good mood, when they're being playful, you see what I'm saying? When they're being, you know, Mm -hmm. that lovey-dovey thing, the kid doesn't even see that element of it. Mm -hmm. All the kid sees is I'm being brushed away, I'm being pushed to the side, and something's going on over there. Eventually that kid's gonna be old enough to to know what was going on there. That's another thing, I think that's really selfish too. Like, why is it that you're shooing away your kid because your boyfriend's here, you want time with your boyfriend? Like. Your kid should come first. You chose to have a child. You well, chose to be a mother. There should be no boyfriend. That's what I'm trying to say. Of course. It, it, it just, it just yeah. doesn't fit. There's, it doesn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's nowhere where it fits mm. where it's going to be helpful to the kid. Of course. Yeah. Because the kid's going to go from confused and not understanding it to understanding it and being resentful. Of course. That, that's it. There's nothing else there. Mm. But, if, but if the man there is the kid's actual father, the kid goes from not understanding it but it being a positive image Mm -hmm. and influence to later understanding it and now it's like mom and dad was getting it on right but it's still positive though it's still it's it's still a good thing so Mm -hmm. so there's just so many things that that the women aren't taking into consideration with the the responsibility and the magnitude of this whole single mother shit because what happens with that is that if you're going to go the single mother route it's not less pressure Right. And it's more pressure now because yeah. everything has to be perfected or else it's going to fuck and your kids up. you're going to be up. running. You're going to be running 24-7. And if you... Right. And, you, and it's crazy because you know you're going to reach your reach the edge of your day and that kid is going to come up to you, do something that's totally normal of a child and you're going to lash out at that child and it's not going to be his fault. And it's that's all, another Right. Trauma. It's going to be all emotional. And it puts... What happens is it puts an unnecessary amount of responsibility and pressure on this woman now because now she has to try to be the disciplinarian. She has to do two people's roles now. Well, that ain't going to happen. Right. Um, whereas before, she could have let the man be that, let him be the bad guy, you know, bad cop, good cop. Mm-hmm. And now she gets to be the, oh, come here. Oh, you, mm-hmm. know, you know your father loves mm-hmm. you. And, and, that, and that better suits her. That better suits her because she wants to be likable. She wants to be the, the good guy all the time. That's the thing. Why do people right. have this problem? Why do you not want to hey. be the good guy? Why do you not want right. to be the, oh, come here, baby. You should right. get. And, and now, <laughs> now what happens is what you don't know is going to hurt you now. Because she doesn't know what's going on over there in the man world. She doesn't know right. what the man's supposed to be doing. Right. She doesn't know how the man would handle this situation. Right. She has no idea. And her not knowing now... Not only is she going to suffer, but obviously the kid's going to suffer. Whereas if the man was there, she could not know these things and it wouldn't matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, she could not know why the father's like, we don't put training wheels on the bike over here. Nah, if he falls, he falls. Helmet... Helmet for what? Mm-hmm. We'll talk about helmets when he gets a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. You get no damn mo- you ain't get no helmet for a bike. Mm-hmm. No, but I don't want. Hit- hey, no helmet. That's it. Mm-hmm. She doesn't have to understand it mm-hmm. because that's his department. Let him do what he's doing. He knows what he's doing as the mm-hmm. father. Mm-hmm. There's no pressure for her to know it, understand it. At all. all she has to do is just shut up and accept yeah. it, and just know that I, he that just know that he 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 got this one. You you figure out what's going to be for lunch tomorrow yeah. and make sure that they have their carrots and their broccoli or whatever. I'm going to make sure that my son knows how to fight and he doesn't get picked on at school. Yeah, make sure right? he grows some tough skin. Exactly. Make sure he's not such a cry baby. That's it's what I'm tra- that's what I'm trying to say. So when the kid comes home, you know, crying and he has a bruise and the, and the, and, the, and the mom is like what happened? And it's like, "Oh, this kid pushed me and this and this and this." She can be upset or whatever, but she can just say, "You know what?" 
wait till your father gets home. Let's, we'll, we'll talk, tell your father about it. Because she can't make a move. Mm -hmm. She can't go and call the principal and make an appointment to go up to the school. She can't do anything without running it by the father first anyway. So in her mind, she was already going a direction with it. Mm -hmm. But when the dad comes home, he's like, hey, what's up, babe? <sighs> what happened? You need to talk to your son. Babe, what happened? Says your son got into a fight today at school. And Did he? Yeah, and some kid did this and that. What? Son, come on here, tell me what happened. Oh, this kid was picking on me. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, your mom said you got into a fight. I didn't fight anybody. Wait, you didn't fight anybody? Right. No, this kid hit me. In it. Whoa, 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 time out. You didn't hit him? Right. No, he hit me first. And, okay, but did you hit him? No, I didn't. Why didn't you hit him? Right. And then the mother's like, wait, what are you talking about? He's like, you told me he got in a fight. Yeah, he got a fight. This isn't a fight. He got bullied. This is worse. Mm -hmm. This, is, this is terrible. The mother's thinking it's good that he didn't hit the kid back because now it's the other kid that's in trouble. Dun, 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 dun. Well, see, that's that female logic. It's to be victim, right? And then the other person be the bad guy. Mm. But that doesn't, that doesn't work in the man realm. In the man realm, in the man realm if you didn't fight... You're the Let yourself you, right. You lost. You're the one that's that's bad. The other kid's the goddamn hero of this story, right? Mm -hmm. So now the the father can say, "Listen, let's go. We're going outside." And the mother, the mother's, what? she doesn't have to know. Mm -hmm. You don't have to understand what's what's going to happen right now. Right now, I'm about to rough this little boy up, and he's about to realize it's much worse to get whooped by me mm -hmm. than it is to get whooped by a kid the same size, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't care how much bigger that kid was, I'm bigger than both <laughs> of you, right? And that would have never occurred to the mother. Mm -hmm. It would have never occurred to her. And it's just a long list of those type of things that would have never occurred to her that either would have occurred to the father or it wouldn't occur to him either. But he still would have taught that lesson mm -hmm. unaware. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that I picked up from men that they weren't even trying to teach. Mm -hmm. Just them being them. You're learning. You're picking something up. You're watching and they don't even know they're being watched. Mm -hmm. And you're learning the right mannerisms. You're learning the right speech pattern. You're learning how to shake another man's hand, how to interact, how to tie a tie. You're learning all of these type of things. You're learning the type of shit you say when women are around. And then you learn the way you talk when there's no women. A lot of the young guys today, you guys don't have no switch. You're the same person when females are around. You're the same person when females are not around. You talk to the, the, the girls the same way that you talk to guys. Yeah, that's you, you don't want to teach, treat a girl like a bro. That's not flattering. That's and the not girls like, are doing the same thing. The girls are like, bro. It's like, why yeah. are you calling me bro? What? Right. That's your chick. I, I used to be bro? one of those. I, and I've been trying to fi I've been trying to feminize myself a little more just because it's embarrassing. Like, why? It's funny why how that comes proud? from not having a dad. Isn't that isn't that the, the, the irony in how the father not being there makes the daughter more masculine? Isn't you would think crazy? that it would be the other because way around. You want to show that, like, just because my dad's not home, I'm tough. I'm still good. I can still beat you. I don't need no man. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a natural man. compensation, though. Yeah. That's yeah. happening. And then when the women try to do it. It's funny. It never, it's never the same. And it's never effective. So when you see women in a position of power, there's women where their pursuit of, of some type of power, some type of authority has nothing to do with men. Like in her head, she's not trying to prove that I'm just as tough as the boys or I'm just as smart as the guys at my job or I'm just as like, that's not even that's not even the function in her mind. It's right? of what they say, though. No, no, no. But I'm saying I'm making the difference between what's going on in the woman's head. So the women that are just trying to be successful, they're just doing something they enjoy doing and they're motivated, you know, in the professional realm. But, but, but again, it has nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with okay, men. Okay. It's just, she's doing what she does. Mm -hmm. When she acquires that authority and she's in that position of power, it doesn't affect her masculine, uh, her femininity. Okay. She's talking to her employees the same way she would have talked to them, you know, if they were just a person. She's just being feminine and that's that. And she's like, no, no, I'm serious. This really needs to get done. Are you sure you're going to be able to do it? I can trust you. I can count on you. Okay, thank you. Oh my God, thank you. I appreciate it. Boom, mm -hmm. right? But when her thought process was, 
the patriarchy and men are oppressed. Oh no, 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 oh, man, man, uh, women yeah. are, I could do it too. And when that's what's in her head and that's her, her motivation and she's doing everything to prove a you're point. Confrontational and, and you're something exactly. Like not, you don't want to work with that. Right, so now when she does get in that position of power, she's imitating what men do. What she, no, what she thinks oh. men are doing. Mm -hmm. So she mm -hmm. thinks she's being a, a strong, assertive man and a leader, really just being a cunt. <laughs> do, you see, do you see what I'm trying to say? No, I've, I've worked with both, yeah. Because she's <laughs> misinterpreting it. She's not realizing that when guys do that, it's not because they're a dick or an asshole they're trying to be. It's because they can talk to each other like that and not offend the other guys right. because the guys aren't taking it that way. Right. They're not. They understand. This is my boss and I need to get on it. So when he's saying, listen... Tomorrow, four o'clock, I need you to be there. You know what you gotta do. All right, man, get the fuck up out of here. Mm -hmm. If you say that to a woman, she's like, man, you gotta talk to me like that. <laughs> do, do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But the male employee, he's ready, he's psyched. He's like, I got you, boss, I got it, I'm on it. Mm -hmm. Saying, get the fuck out of my office, he understands the difference in the mm -hmm. tone. Let's get it done, let's go. Right. right. And it's not, Where's get the out of my face, I right, don't see you. Right, the <laughs> females is, fo is focusing on the word, the wording of it. Yeah. Like, why did he have to say, get the fuck out of my office? Yeah. Like, like, what an asshole. It's like, you could have said that a whole, you could have been a lot nicer about right. it. Right. You but could have said that nicely. As guys, we can tell the difference, it's the same sentence, but we can detect the, the, the tone of it. Mm -hmm. There's the difference between that, that, encouraging get the fuck out of my office let's get it mm -hmm. there's a difference between that and yo get the fuck out of my office mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's a difference mm -hmm. and we don't learn that as adults we learn that on the football field we learn that when we're at practice we learn that when the coach is in our face we learn that when we're in the huddle and the captain is like all right boy so this is what we're gonna do that's when we learn the difference when we're play fighting we're bumping off of each other as boys and it just prepares us for manhood. Now, when that component is missing, then you have these soy boys that they're like, uh, like I don't like the way that he talks to me and I'm going to H&R tomorrow. And it's like, dude, you're not even gay. <laughs> I never said I was gay. Then why the fuck are you talking like that? Right. Mm -hmm. This is me. And if you can't accept me, what the fuck, bro? What the fuck? What is happening here? Right? So you yeah. have these guys that are so awkwardly you know, they're not adjusted. And how did that happen? All these guys crying on their on the Instagram stories, that's reposting what, the that's stat That's what I'm these saying. Things, like, what, like, how did that happen? That happened when we just made it a purely feminine narrative, right? And then that feminine narrative is misguided. It's misled because the women aren't the ones that are supposed to be leading in the first place. So we don't have women leading. We have women thinking that they're leading. And we have guys thinking that you're supposed to let the women lead because, you know, men and women are equal. Wait, what now? And you want to make your woman happy. That's exactly. So now it's all over the place. And and men are putting a lot of their sense of self-worth in the woman's hands. That's right. Like they're, they think right. That they're letting them decide. Yeah. Right. They're, they're, letting the woman, they're letting the woman be an, the arbiter. Here's your number. This is how much you're worth. Boom. And the problem with that is, right, this is me. the female's emotions are going to fluctuate. That's just... Sorry. Right, that, right, that, Sorry. right. That's just part of their nature. Yeah. So there's so many guys that think that if a woman isn't happy all the time, that they're failing or they're doing something wrong. And it's like, women would never be happy all the time. That would never be the case. So her not being happy all the time is normal. Mm -hmm. But there's so many guys that think that they're fucking up somewhere. And that they need to do something different. They have to change. And now they're obsessed with trying to figure it out. What, what am I doing wrong? What am I supposed to do? Bro, do nothing. Exactly. And they don't, they, do they don't understand how that could be, how could that possibly be the right thing? First of all, you're, you're, you have too much time to be thinking about what you could do to make her happy or feel better. And in all actuality, that's probably why she feels the way she feels because you actually have the time to notice that. You should already be too busy on your grind. And that's the best thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. Because if you're on your grind and you're increasing your value, that's what's gonna make her happy. Right. Right? Yeah. And if you're right and she's wrong, you going back and forth with her is not gonna change her mind. What you're supposed to be doing is saying, hey, listen, I've already spoken on it. Mm -hmm. I've already told you what it is. Mm -hmm. And I gotta go. Mm -hmm. I got something I need to, I got to do, I got to do something I, somewhere I need to be. I don't need to convince you. Right. You can do that. No, but. I'm out. 
him even entertaining that 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 that's a thing. No, no, no. But that's all like the the subtext in between the lines. Thing, right. You know, so yeah. so so now she can continue to believe that that's a thing mm -hmm. because you're entertaining the possibility that you need to explain yourself to her. But if you never even behaved like that was a thing, if mm -hmm. you just like yo blah 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 blah, and I gotta go, mm -hmm. are you just gonna leave? Door slam. Said what I said. Whatever you yeah. think is on you. No response. The door slam answered mm -hmm. that question. Mm -hmm. He's already in the car. Doo -doo. Mm -hmm. So now she's going to be upset for whatever length of time. Mm -hmm. She might even call a friend and commiserate, and they, 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 you know, they're going to you know, man bash for a little bit. <laughs> right? Okay. And then by the time he gets back home, she's over it. Mm -hmm. But if he continues to go back and forth with her about it, now it's going to continue to be a thing. Yeah. Because now she's benefiting because now you're doing all this extra shit to try to make it up to her. You're incentivizing her to have mm -hmm. these little uh, temper tantrums. Mm -hmm. And you're validating them. You're acting like they're, they're actually valid arguments or concerns when really they were just some type of emotional flash mm -hmm. that she went through. Mm -hmm. So all you need to do is just say what you got to say, leave, and let her hold that. Because either she's going to change her mind and everything's going to be what it was and, and we've, we've agreed that you were right mm -hmm. and now we don't have to go through this again on this particular topic. We'll go through it on a million other things but on this particular thing, you know, the, ju the, the jury has, has already ruled on it, right? But since you went the way that you went, now you just incentivize her to do this stupid shit over and over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Whenever she's feeling a way, she's going to do this stupid shit. Mm -hmm. And if she's not getting enough attention... Now she's going to do some dumb shit to get your attention. And you keep responding to it, encourages her to keep doing this dumb shit that gets her attention. Mm -hmm. When the solution was to ignore it. Mm -hmm. And then she'll realize, okay, this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I have to get its attention another way. Because at the end right? of the day, when you, when you ignore the problem, what you're doing is you're forcing the girl to, one, look at herself. And two, question, is this worth losing him over? And Exa usually, exactly. if, usually that answer will be no. So they'll check mm -hmm. themselves. And then, I'll check myself. And, and then they also had to herself. remind themselves that I want this guy. This guy has value to me. Mm -hmm. She has to remind herself. Because women will get complacent too. Guy, guys mm -hmm. take girls for granted at times. And the girl takes guys for granted at times also. Human nature. But by you capitulating to her, what you're saying to her is you're better than me. Therefore, I need to put effort into keeping you. And the fact that I'm putting more effort into keeping you happy than being on my grind means that you're more important and more valuable than my grind. Mm -hmm. And to, to, to a woman, what that says is, oh, shit, this motherfucker isn't complete. Like, oh, shit, I'm required to complete this motherfucker? I don't want to be with a person that's not whole. I'm not whole. I need to be with a man that's whole. Mm -hmm. Right? If this guy is only at 70%, 65%, he needs me to feel like he's at 100? That means he's not already at 100 and I've been with the wrong guy. Whew. Thanks for letting me know right. before I wasted any more time with you. Right. Now, let me start surveying the landscape, right? And checking the DM for something better mm -hmm. because as soon as I can situate that, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. So she's already put in her two weeks notice, right? It might take more than two weeks for mm -hmm. another guy to say, hey, I'll commit to you. But the moment that a guy that she perceives of a higher value says that, she's out of there. And she could very well be wrong. The guy she had could be much better than the guy she left for. But he was sending mixed signals. Mm -hmm. Just like the guy that gets on the phone like, hey, uh, hey, hey, Allende. <laughs> yeah, but that guy's about his shit, though. Okay. Right? The motherfucker's long. Right? Damn near 6'2", so he long, right? Mm -hmm. Making a couple hundred K a year, so the money long, right? He owns property, so the money long. His family come from money, mm -hmm. so the, the, the legacy long, everything long, but you get on the phone talking to me like, uh, so, uh, hey man. Uh, so now, if I didn't probe any further, right? I would've said, man, this, I don't know what That's the man, a woman's gonna find, that's make him fall in love and use him till the day he dies. Yeah, but that's what I was telling him, that, that that's the issue, but that's not even what's happening. It's, mm. the, the, a lot of the women are losing interest. So it's like, they're losing interest not because there's not value there. They're, they're assuming that, that there isn't value there because of the way he's yeah. coming at them. Yeah. Because a lot of times, the first thing that a woman can go, has to go on is just the man's level of confidence. Because she's thinking to yourself, she's thinking to herself, you know you better than I know you, because I just met you, so you know you. 
So if there's no cockiness, there's no arrogance, there's no confidence, if there's none of those things, then I can only go off of that. And that's telling me don't waste any time on this guy because he himself thinks that he's weak and he's beneath you. That's why these guys that bullshit can get, a, can get a lot further with women. And then later they're like, oh, I didn't know that he already had a wife. And, or I didn't know he was this. And I didn't know he was like that. And I didn't know. Yeah, because he first presented himself as he was a value. And she, she believed it. It was enough to keep her, you know, um, intrigued and to continue, you know, interact. Because the first thing is like, okay, oh, wow, he has value. Okay, well, what's the sex like? And question, because I have, that just brings me to this. I have like this almost theory, I guess. Um, and I would love your input on it. When men look for the opposite in a woman. The quieter and the less she got going on, the better because the less combative and the less entitled she'll feel. Well, those guys are going to be already like, uh, like look at it this way, right? When you look at fighters, right? Mm -hmm. Fighters are some of the guys that are least likely to fight. Mm -hmm. outside of the actual sport. Mm -hmm. So if, if, you, if you're like, you know, the guys that I've known that are like MMA fighters and shit like that, those motherfuckers have the highest level of tolerance a lot of times. Real strength for, bu for bullshit out in the street. Mm -hmm. Because like, that's what they do all day every day is fight in the ring. So the last thing they want to do is to get into some altercation, you know, out in the street, out in the parking lot or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because they already know. So with that being said, it, like, if a guy is used to fighting and he's used to having to deal with other men in conflict, the last thing he wants to do is deal with that with a woman. Right. You see what I mean? Right. So that's why a lot of times the guys that are the most, um, the, the word would be um, disagreeable, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. Prefer to be with the women that are the most agreeable. Mm -hmm. So by virtue of that when women are disagreeable they're actually only attracting men that are passive mm -hmm. and i think a lot of women don't understand that dynamic of energy they don't get it and i know they don't get it because women verbalize questions that sound so stupid to people who do get it so when they say things like um you know all, all our attractors are these little boys <laughs> right like for example i i met, I met this brazilian <laughs> chick a couple of days ago and she's 35 with three kids, but she doesn't look necessarily 35. She doesn't look as young as she thinks she looks. She looks about 28. You know, I'd give her between 28 and 30 is what right. she looks, right. but she's 35 with three kids. And she mm -hmm. says to me, you know, she has all these guys that are in the waiting box, of course. I mean, she's a good looking woman, so that's, you know, nothing new. She said it yeah. like she's supposed to get a cookie or some kind right. of trophy for it. I hate when women say things yeah, like that. Yeah, you're an attractive okay. woman. Like, there, there's, like it's hard. there's nothing unique about you having a bunch of dudes orbiting you, right? right. Waiting their turn, which won't come until right. your value is so low that it's like, all right, you, you, you know, you're up next. Mm -hmm. But she says to me, like... You know, I need a, I need a man. I need a, a, a grown man. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, not me, bitch. Not me. <laughs> not, you know, not me. Right. And, and she's like, yeah, all the guys, uh, cause even the guy that she just broke up with was like, I think 30, he was like 29 to 30. And the guy that she started talking to was 31. And I was saying, yeah, this guy's making some rookie mistakes. And she's like, yeah, all, all the guys that, um, you know, that are interested in me, you know, are, are younger guys. She's like, I need a, a, a older man or whatever, a guy my age. And I was thinking to myself, the way her and her friend were saying it was like, it's frustrating. Like, they can't figure it out. And I'm just like, you do realize that guys your age are like disgusted by that type of action like they're dating younger women like you like you oh, like you don't get like you, right you don't get it it's like it's like that's what you attract because the guys that are going to be interested in you are going to be younger guys because of that energy that you're giving yeah. off is at the other spectrum yeah um, it's, it's the other polarity right so it's it's a, it's a mm -hmm. polarity thing going on there's this there's this girl I follow on Instagram. I don't want to dive too into it because she's actually a really sweet girl and I don't want to put her on blast like that. But um, she has... You just, she complains you just don't about, say her name. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just talking about her situation. And what you're describing is probably a lot of women anyway. Exactly. <laughs> it so could be anybody. We, nobody knows. You don't got to know. Um, but it's one of those like... All right, mid to early 30s mm -hmm. why can't i get a good guy why don't guys like me i'm really sweet i'm really approachable i'm this and i'm i'm the full i'm the full package right 
according as, to you, according to her. As you're on social media venting your whole life and all your things. The, guys the, can read. The mature men you want don't want a woman who's going to cry yeah, on social media. Yeah, they can see that. They're like, uh-uh. They're like, oh, you're going to air out all my stuff. You're going to post screenshots of our conversations on your stories? Yeah. You're gonna, I, yeah, I'm not trying to be your next gonna, ex. Yo. I'm not trying to be your future ex. <laughs> I'm not trying to be. Yo, and, and off of silly little comments that guys make all mm-hmm. the time of a cute little flirty teasy thing. They're like, oh, that, made, that really hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. Instead of going to the guy saying, I don't like that you said that. It's on Instagram. Oh, hey, I don't like that you said this. Guys, what mm-hmm. should I do with this? Guys, these aren't your friends. These people on social they, media are not your friends. They don't realize that. <laughs> like, like, women don't realize that. They're the same, for the tea. Like, the same way that women side with women is the same way that dudes side with dudes. Like, they don't realize that. Yeah. So, when you're throwing your ex under the bus and you're talking to this new guy, you're out having martinis with some new guy, and you're telling him about your ex, every time you insult your ex, he sees it as this is how she's going to talk about me when we break up because all she wants to focus on was what the guy did wrong and not what she did to entice that type of behavior right. or what she did to allow that type of behavior right and he's if he's a smart guy and he's an attractive guy he would have had experience with women he would have had women so he already knows what the category game. you fall into right he knows what it is mm-hmm. so he's like well you're showing me how you deal with a guy when you're no longer with him or you're no longer getting along. That's a bad sign right there. So it's like, yeah, I, I don't want to deal with someone that this is how they go about it in a breakup. But not realizing that if the breakup is amicable or if the, you know, the woman has some type of integrity or some type of respect or decency, some fairness, that's a turn on. That's like, wow, okay, so if this is how she deals with her ex-husband... It makes me, you know, it, it shows that she's actually a good person. She's mm-hmm. a genuine person. And because that's at, that's her at her worst. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. see what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's her at her worst. And he's getting a, he's getting a glimpse of that. Like, oh, this is how you deal with a breakup, mm-hmm. which is the worst case scenario. Good to know. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So when women tell me stuff about guys, I always side with the guy. Of majority course. majority of the time I side with the guy unless he's yeah. like super super dead wrong majority of the time I'm trying mm-hmm. to side with the guy the whole time I'm like all right give me something that I can mm-hmm. you know because mm-hmm. I'm rooting I'm, root, I'm rooting for the guy mm-hmm. and it's not even about the guy it's about me mm-hmm. you know because I'm making it clear you know where my loyalty is like where my alignment is mm-hmm. uh, my loyalty is not the pussy <laughs> you know what I'm saying my my, lo- right. my loyalty is to the brotherhood right and you this, already got your secured at home right. you don't gotta worry about yeah, it so you don't impress nobody that's how I know so many Mm -hmm. of these guys they don't have a clue because they're thinking no 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 no. i have to take her side because i want to get inside not realizing that taking taking the dude's side would actually is more attractive to her because she's like okay i can see that this guy isn't going to lie he's not going to bullshit me just to get what he wants Mm -hmm. so it's like a lot of dudes don't realize that their behavior pedestalizes the pussy and by doing that you're putting yourself beneath her indirectly this is a math that's going on in a woman's head it's a fact, she's yeah. like okay if he has to lie to me mm-hmm. and he has to pander to me to get the pussy that means the pussy's out of his league and if it's out of his league then i don't want to give it to him i don't want to be with him so a lot of times you guys is holding up the pussy yourself a lot of times you guys are like oh you know i don't know how this girl feels about me you know i'm going out with this girl and i haven't you slept with her yet and i don't know should i make a move but bro it's because you're pushing yourself away from the pussy by the way you're acting. And then because she continues to communicate with the guy or go out with the guy, he's thinking that she's feeling him. Mm-hmm. In this day and age, if a chick hasn't slept with you within the first uh, three dates. Yeah, in this day and age. Yeah, yeah in this day and age. Like, yeah, Depending on how old you guys are, like whatever, right. you know. Like. In my time, it would have been the opposite. In my time, if a, if a, if a female is like you know getting to know you that much that would mean that she does like you she is attracted to you she like she wants to keep you but nowadays no 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 no. nowadays you're just becoming that shoulder to to like to cry and complain on and she's basically just uh using you for your time just using you for your attention your validation which sucks Mm -hmm. and then even if you do get the pussy that still doesn't mean she likes you it could have been some pity pussy or it could have just been she's that um, needy at that time she just needs the validation 
So, or maybe you're just good for now until she gets to where she wants to be in life. Mm -hmm. Until she's like, I gotta get, I gotta upgrade. Yeah, it's yeah. like, ooh, I, mean, I feel like loyalty is very rare nowadays, and it's really sad. Well, that's because people don't know what it is. Like, you gotta understand, man. It, like, human beings, we we pass things down um, from one another. You know, oral tradition, storytelling, examples. Mm -hmm. So when you break that cycle like what's gonna what's gonna replace it what's gonna put it back mm -hmm. and see that's why i think that my channel is already very valuable and only going to become more and more valuable because i'm trying to um i'm trying to to reestablish certain things that have been lost and if somebody doesn't put it back in the mix it's gonna go extinct. No. So when you're saying that all oh, loyalty is hard to find these days, well, yeah, of course, because what's happening is, is loyalty that loyalty in women, I say, in in women, I mean, yeah, mostly and guys because, too, like, and guys too. But though. like, I feel like guys are more loyal. Know what it is to be more loyal to their friends and stuff like that. There's, I feel like there's more of a bond in the man's community than in the woman's community. In the woman's community, I feel like there's more <sighs> false false motive motives behind the what bonds women together where i feel like men are bonded more through the struggles that they have and the things that they're encountering we're Which, still yeah, losing women it. have a lot of the we're still struggles, losing that though like, it's yeah it's dying trust me the loyalty in the guys is dying because they don't like they don't know what it is oh you mean they the younger generation right they don't know what it is mm -hmm. so if, if there's nobody to teach it to them they can't they understand it they can't embody it mm -hmm. right and then they can't exhibit it at all mm -hmm. and to be honest with you loyalty never really should have been something where you have to like think about it it kind of right. it's kind of supposed to just be instilled yeah. in you right to go against it should nauseate you to your core right yeah. it should be instilled in you and then the, the guys that have it i'm trust me they're not really necessarily dealing with it on a conscious level you're just compelled you know what i'm saying you feel you know what I'm saying? You feel com compelled to. Like when dude was asking me, you know, about the situation in Fresh and Fit, it's like I wasn't doing what I was doing because I liked this dude or because I thought we were friends or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's because I conceptualized it like I'm a player on a team. Mm -hmm. I don't need to like all the members on my team, mm -hmm. but I have to have this loyalty to them because they're on my team. What happens in the locker room, what happens off the field, off the court, whatever, we might have to, it might come to blows. But when we're playing together, I have to give it my all. I have to give my all because it's my team. And I'm not thinking about it that way. It's just, that's natural. That's na it's going to be a natural instinct. The problem is, is when the other players on the team don't have that same instinct. That's when you run into issue. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So nowadays, you have certain qualities that they're becoming extinct. So instead of being rewarded, they're actually demonized. Mm -hmm. You actually end up losing now. Nowadays, if you're the loyal one, you end up losing. So you see how you're saying that loyalty is is is, is starting to be uh, scarce with the women? For the women that are loyal, it actually backfires on them in this time. They'll be loyal to a guy, and then the guy will fuck mm -hmm. it all up because he didn't even know how to recognize it, mm -hmm. and he had no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's not loyal himself. Mm -hmm. So now it's a, it's it's a fucked up issue now, and now she actually gets punished for being loyal. Mm -hmm. Her friends are gonna tell her she's stupid for having those 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 values, mm -hmm. right? And the guy is gonna fuck her over for it. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna learn that it's actually not beneficial to her. Where really, it's, it actually would have been um, an advantage to her if it was received well by the by society the as well as the proper, the right guy, yeah. right? So now, boom, she's getting punished for that. Just like being a stepfather back in the day used to be the shit. Back in mm -hmm. the day, if you were a stepfather, the whole community respected you. Mm -hmm. Like, you were the man because you stepped now up. You're simp. Now you're a fucking simp. Mm -hmm. Now you're punished for that. Wow. You what see you what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's ass backwards now. Yeah. Well, what happened is the values got lost in translation because the fathers aren't in the house anymore. Mm -hmm. So now you got a bunch of guys who aren't fathers calling stepfather simps. Mm -hmm. What the fuck do you know about fatherhood? Mm -hmm. 
you don't realize that he's a hero because mm -hmm. you're not even a father. So you don't even understand the, the, the level of responsibility of just taking care of your own damn kids, let alone stepping up for another man's kids. And then mm -hmm. also the women didn't have fathers when they were growing up. So they don't know how to respect value or appreciate it or even understand the magnitude of what they're asking for or expecting from this guy. Mm -hmm. Women tell on themselves when they say, I expect him to just know. Why can't he just be a man? Why can't he just step up? Why can't he just, exactly. You don't know why can't he just do that because you have no idea what that entails. And that's why you're taking it for granted. That's why you have the nerve to ask for that and not even realize what it is that you're asking for. And then when you get it, you don't even know how to appreciate it. You don't even know how to like reciprocate. You don't even know how to give back for that, right? So like, again, it's just, it's really fucked up. You got these guys that are complaining. Oh, why can't this woman just be cooperative? Well, I, I get it, you're right. <laughs> it would be nice if women were cooperative, but you do realize that you ain't got shit to cooperate with. What is it you got going on that you, you need her to cooperate with? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, man, she don't know how to get on nigga program. Well, what's your program? Mm -hmm. would you, would you, I mean, um, yeah. So what's, what's the program? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you have a point. She has no idea how to get on a program. But you don't even have a program, my dude. Mm -hmm. So if she was a chick that for some odd reason knew how to get on a program, wherever she learned it would be irrelevant because it would be in vain because you don't have a program. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you know, you know, this girl, man, she's so strong minded and she, you know, she's, you know, independent and, uh, you know, she doesn't let me lead. Oh, you're a leader. Well, well, no, what I'm, what I'm, you know, what I'm saying is, you know what I'm saying? She, 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 you know, she always want to argue and fight and, you know, she don't let me lead. No, 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 but hold on. Let's get back to what I was well, asking she you. She let you lead. Right. So, so you lead. Yo, I would lead if she would let me know, whoa, time, pause. Are you a leader or not? Mm -hmm. No, man, what I'm saying is she don't let me lead. Bro, we're not talking about her. Right. When she met you, were you already a leader? Right. And then it's like you have that moment of silence. Right. So I'm not saying that you're wrong about her not knowing how to follow. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, though. You don't know how to lead either. Even, even if she did know how to follow, mm. where's your resume? Mm -hmm. Who have mm -hmm. you been leading? What exes have you led? What other men do you lead? Do you lead at work? Do you lead at school? Do you lead in your neighborhood? Give us some examples of your leadership. Mm -hmm. they, they don't exist. So you're, bl you're blaming your lack of leadership on a woman is equivalent to a woman saying, I will be submissive for the right man. Oh, bitch, whoa, time out. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa. You don't become feminine when you meet a masculine dude. Mm -hmm. You meet a masculine dude being feminine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Or maybe masculine, or did, in did, my case, maybe did, the masculine did, guy thinks you're funny. And goes, did, I can work with this. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so it's like you, you, you bo you're both, you're both out of the mix, mm -hmm. and you're pointing the finger, not realizing that you're both right, but you're both wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. You're both r right about the other side being lacking, but you're both lacking. Aware of what you're lacking. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so. The, the, the gender war is just futile because the solution is the, the lack of the gender war. Like the solution to the gender war is there being no war. Right, like that's the solution, yeah. right? The solution is putting the men and the women back together. Stop screaming across the hall right. and focus on the mirror. Exactly. And, and because the only way for either side to improve is for the two sides to go back to working together so that the next generation can have their shit together. And that's why I really don't really see there being much of, um, of a solution until some dudes step aside and figure it the fuck out 
and mm. then come back and lead the women. Yep. They, need to, they need to figure it out and come back and say, all right, we got it. Mm -hmm. We got it. So which women want to follow? Because we mm -hmm. got it now. We got it. We got it together. So we're taking the women that want to cooperate and follow mm -hmm. and accept their role. Mm -hmm. And whoever wants to do their little independent thing, you can continue to do that. Mm -hmm. that, that isn't working. So go you can go out till 5 a.m. even though your kids are home. Yeah, just go, ahead, just go ahead and do that. Go, don't worry about your hubby. Go with your girls night out. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. Right. Because it's like these things have to... It's like you, you, you'll you look at like prostitution and be like, oh, prostitution is bad. And it's just like, yeah, but that shit will solve so many problems. If they were to legalize that and bring it back, it would solve so many problems because it allows. That's what I was saying to you earlier about like the issue with porn is that it's it's porn and not prostitution, whereas in all actuality porn still is prostitution mm -hmm. so like it's ass backwards right because the government is like oh prostitution nah that's illegal oh no porn that's cool it's like oh okay so if i pay a female to sleep with me it's illegal but if i pay her to, to sleep with a stranger and i record it it's legal one helps society the other one destroys society and now I guarantee you there's a bunch of eyebrows up like, oh, man, he done went off the deep end again. <laughs> did, 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 did I really? Because prostitution destroys society. It corrupts, you know, people sexually and morally. Morally, I think, you, I think you meant porn. Oh, sorry. Did I, what yeah, I said? you porn. said prostitution. Oh, no, no yeah, yeah, porn, yeah. right. So, so, yeah, yeah. so it demoralizes a population, which allows the government to control us more, right? Desensitizes it, us. Right, it desensitizes us. So now it corrupts the females and it makes them no longer marriage material, no longer girlfriend material, and they're going to have a whole bunch of trauma and issue for the rest of their life as they you know, get out of that industry. The damage isn't really going to hit her until she's, she's done. And then it's going to lead to a bunch of other things like prostitution, uh, drug addiction, all this other type of crap, right? And then on the guy side, these guys now... Um, they viewed women from entirely the wrong lens now because it dehumanized the female to him. He doesn't understand her. He doesn't know how to please her. He doesn't know how to attract her, turn her on, any of that. But yet he thinks he does. And he didn't get any experience with women because he kept relying on just being able to press play on his, uh, his uh, tablet or his phone or his computer, right? So he hasn't developed those skills because he's been distracted with this. And now he is even worse off of interacting with the female. So now both sides are screwed up because of, you know, this legal form of prostitution, which is porn. Now, if the other traditional type of prostitution was the go-to, that would be discreet. Nobody's advertising that, <laughs> right? Nobody's, you know, telling their... Nobody their, their know you can't right, get it on your own. Right. No, you have to pay for no, it. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody needs to find out. That's just between the contractor and the contractee, Shit. right? That's it. So it's hush-hush somewhere else, right? Okay. Now, with that, the guy can actually get experience. Like, he can get actual experience. He's not playing with himself, Okay, he's getting comfortable with the with the female body and the female anatomy. Learning the buttons w without any pressure, <laughs> without any insecurity, mm -hmm. because it's all about him. Because yeah. I paid for it. Right, this girl don't care. She's right. Do what I will. Now he can ask questions and get actual answers. He can actually like learn something, get good with what he's doing, and he can also satisfy himself, get himself off, and then he can go back and focus on work and interact with real women. When and it fills the need for women who want to be promiscuous and on their own and do their thing. Right. Go for it. So now he can interact with women purely to make a connection and to communicate and to build a relationship because the sexual part is taken care of. Mm -hmm. So now he can focus on all the other important aspects of the relationship. But when it finally does get to the bedroom, he actually will have some experience and know what the, the, the hell is he, he, he doing, right? Mm -hmm. Now... Just like you were saying, the women that want to make a business out of it and make money out of it or whatever, guess what? They can do that and they can do that hush hush in their own little place, in their own little corner or whatever, whatever, right? If it was legalized, it'd be regulated, they'd be testing, they'd be, you know, uh, LLCs and whatever, whatever. It would all be, it would all be done legit. Now, okay, now what does this do for the women? Okay, this allows the women to have a clear separation between guys that are just interested in sleeping with them and guys that want a relationship. Because the guys that just want to sleep with them would not be putting in the effort and wasting their time because they could just go to the brothel. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And also, the women wouldn't want to be associated with 
this end of the spectrum. So they'd have to go more towards the other end of the spectrum, which is girlfriend material, wife material, purity, and that Modesty. used to be such a, a compliment. I remember being in high school and everybody like, oh, she's wifey, she's wifey, and everybody wanted to be wifey. Why nobody want to be wifey now? Why? <laughs> right, because, cause, <laughs> because now it's okay, because now it's socially accepted to be a borderline prostitute. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? So now it's ambiguous. Now it's mm-hmm. blurred. You now don't we have to be a prostitute. Right. You can get up for free. So now we don't know what's going on now. So now you can dress like it, act like it, you can give that incentive, you can give that impression. But then, if you don't like this particular guy, you can act appalled. Like, how dare you? I'm right. not. Oh, right. I'm, I'm not, I'm not I'm, an I'm, object. I'm sorry, you had the uniform don't on. Don't sexualize me. Right, you had the uniform on. I had no idea. With the right. post that you were making, I thought. You see what I'm saying? I thought that's what it was. Right. Yeah. And then now, when she's trying to play the the girlfriend role and the the, the wife role, and wants to be respected, I, right? She wants that. to be respected. Like, she wants something serious. Now the the quality guys are like, yeah, but just last month you were posting. But then you were doing the, and you wore the, but nah, I don't, nah, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't view you like that. Mm-hmm. So now it's confusing and it's all over the place. But if we brought that back and legalized it, it would be like it was in the past. Mm-hmm. You're either a wife or you want to work down at the brothel. Mm-hmm. Make up your mind. Mm-hmm. It's one or the other. And it's fine. Either one's fine because it, it, it but, benefits but, society. But either one can't moonlight as the other. No. Like, if, okay. Like yeah. Right. Not. If you work down at the saloon. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. You're not going to be like flirting it up with high valued men exactly. trying to be seen with them but in that's public. Thing of, of making your decisions and accepting what comes with them. Right. Like, why, you can't have it all. That's what I'm trying so to say. So, pick and choose. And pick and then, choose what you find most, you, most like, important. You make those, the, the other decision now, you got to do the purity till marriage. And if you, if you aren't going to do that, you sure as hell have to keep it a secret. Mm-hmm. Because I don't honestly believe that all these women were actually virgins until marriage. Mm-hmm. But they made sure that nobody knew. They made sure that it was nobody's business. Mm-hmm. Their father couldn't find out. Their brothers couldn't find out. And damn sure the other suitors you know, couldn't find out. Mm-hmm. But now what we have is this blurring of it. We have this blurring of it. We don't know what's what. Right. And women think you they could change their know. mind. Right. Women think they could change their mind whenever That's they feel business. like it. And it's, my whole point is it's not working for them. Mm-hmm. When you say that to women, they get all upset and offended like you're trying to hate on them or rain on their parade. It's like, yeah, but it's not working. You're being greedy. You want it all. You no, can't No, no, no. But it. it's not working is my point. Being greedy is you're actually getting it. Mm-hmm. Like it's not working. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. You're not fooling anybody. The, the high-valued men aren't being fooled into marrying a washed-up mm-hmm. you know, thought. They mm-hmm. they're not going for it. And the next generations that would think this is okay right. aren't going to be that's, high value. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. It's like when you when you try to contest the feminist the the feminist ideology, these women act like you're trying to like hate on them or shut them down. It's like it's like sis, I'm trying to save you <laughs> because it's not working. Sh- show me the happy the happy feminist in their 40s. Mm-hmm. They don't exist. Are you happy? Is right. The so so the point is this shit isn't working. You're acting like like I'm arguing with you to be right. Like I don't care. Knock yourself out. I know what find the women that don't have this mindset and there are women who will be like oh no i'm i'm single i'm happy i choose to be single da-da. are you lying that's, to yourself? that's my point are it's you like, really right, happy but, but, but like, they will argue it to the death of them oh, like yeah. like 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 the men benefit from you agreeing yeah the right. men benefit from you you know ch- ch- switching up but but you benefit more is my is of my course. is my point the women and the children are the ones that are suffering the right. most right but they're they're arguing it. So when you try to argue the single mother thing, they act like you're trying to like hate on. It's like yo, you're you're living in misery. Mm-hmm. Your shit is in shambles. You're living in chaos, mm-hmm. and you have your children in it. Mm-hmm. And then you're trying to get married after the fact, and it's not working. And you're mad at dudes for pointing out the why. Mm-hmm. Like we're trying to help you fix it. Mm-hmm. And and I'm a firm believer that a lot of these single mothers could get what it is that they want, but they would have to first shut up and listen to men. Like, I'll tell you how to get a high-valued man as a single mother. Like, like I could tell you, mm-hmm. right? I feel like I could tell them more than single, uh, more than Kevin Samuels is. Mm-hmm. No, no, because I feel like Kevin Samuels is telling them a lot of the truth, but I don't really feel like he's, t- he's not really giving them like the playbook on how to like, uh-huh. how to mm-hmm. finesse it and finagle it. Mm-hmm. He's, ba- he's basically just saying, hey, listen, this is unlikely because this is where you sit mm-hmm. on the value scale mm-hmm. and you're not even interested in what these type of men want. Mm-hmm. That's all he's really saying at this mm-hmm. point. He's not telling them how to, how hack, to, get from there. Right, how to hack the system. Mm-hmm. Right? I could tell chicks like, 
if you do this, this, and this, and behave like this, and set this up like this, and reevaluate this, and change this to this, mm-hmm. and do that, like that, you could actually get a dude to do the stepdaddy thing. Mm-hmm. But with that attitude, hell to the nah. Right. Hell to the nah. Right. All that's going to do is get you a miserable household. Because first of all, you're only going to attract some lame dudes that can't do better than you, number one. Which is going to make you miserable in turn because you're going to resent him and women become miserable when Your they kids resent. Kids are lose respect for you because right. you brought that, this bum into the house. Right, that's what I'm trying to say. So mm-hmm. everybody's going to be unhappy with that scenario. Mm-hmm. But if you make certain adjustments, you could actually get a high value dude in there. But they're not even willing to listen. And it's like, okay, they're not willing to listen. And of course, they're obviously not willing to make the sacrifice. And they're not willing to do the work. So it's those three things there, right? You have to first listen and accept that there is a fucking problem that happens to be your fault. Mm -hmm. So that's the accountability part they don't want to take. So they're not going to listen at all because if they listen, they would have to accept that, damn, you're making a a point, right, which leads you to accountability, which you're allergic to. Then the next thing, (laughs) um, the, the next thing would be the work Mm -hmm. So that's like the applying yourself. And then the next thing would be the sacrifices. You're going to have to sacrifice the ego. You're going to have to give up your female friends. You're 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 going to have to maybe probably give up the social media. There's a lot of things that they would have to give up. So they're they're not trying to do those three, those three things. But if they did, they could actually get said guy, Mm -hmm. but you would first have to acknowledge that you're asking a lot of him and you're coming with baggage. They don't want to accept and it's that, and, the truth and it's not that not only do they not want to accept the truth is they're being very inconsiderate of everything they're asking of the man and it's like very. since when does their happiness matter to you they already have the advantage because what the dude would want or what he would accept although it is still far less than what he's giving or i should say although it's a lot of work for them it's still far less than what he's giving yeah that's the crazy thing is like the woman is thinking oh i don't want to do all that but that's still less than what you're asking of him much like bare attraction as it is it's like yo look at the list of things that you want from a dude and look at the list of the things that the guy wants like you're already ahead of the game sis like you you already got the advantage mm -hmm. that's where the egocentrism you were talking about earlier goes into play like people are looking out for themselves of course and Selfishness is unfortunately one of the things that are str- like really yeah, getting out of hand. A pussy is one hell of a bargaining chip. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, even with that being said, women just want to rely on only that. It's like, damn, you, al- you already got a bazooka. You already got a bazooka mm. to a pocket knife, mm. and you still don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Mm. You still don't want to put nothing else into the, you don't want to sweeten the deal at all. Mm. And you're already working with that much of an advantage. Mm -hmm. Look at what, look at how much a guy has to bring to meet that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you even look at like, you go to any nightclub and just check out the VIP. Mm -hmm. Look how many women can get in the VIP with just the box. Mm -hmm. Look how few men can get in the VIP and they got to have the black car. They got to have this. They got to have that. They had to pay the valet. They had to pay the bottle service girl. They had to... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. Look how much they had to do to get in there. And all the chick had to do was just do some hair, do some makeup, tight dress, and some box. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. And these women are still complaining Mm -hmm. when when they have such an overwhelming advantage on the market and it's like well damn so it bro it is tricky now i will say that the man is compensated if he does reach that level because if he actually does get there it's lonely at the top for a dude there's very less guys there's much less guys to compete with and then you have access to all these females so yeah it it does kind of even out at the end of the day but it's just the women it's just so out of perspective for them. And they're whining and complaining about so many things, which is why a lot of guys just hit them with the, those are first world problems. Mm -hmm. Because they have no idea how lucky and how fortunate they are, but yet they're still like, boo hoo, oh, this is a, it's like, man, there's so many countries that if you were to go to and see what the women are working with, you would realize how ridiculously lucky and fortunate you are. And the crazy part is, the women in these other countries are happy. Like they're happier, like they're happy with their husband. They're like, oh, you know, they're so happy with their husband. And they're, they're both struggling. They're both struggling, they're both working, and they're happy, they're content. Their husband doesn't even have a car. You see what I'm saying? He comes home smelling like garbage or whatever the heck it is that he does all day at work. They also have to work. 
So it's like in these other countries, the women have been working. It's like y'all over here talking about, yeah, because of feminism, we can work, we're in the workplace. It's like in these other countries, feminism is just getting there. And the women been in the workplace. So being in the workplace has nothing to do with feminism for them. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. And they're working their asses off and they still need a man. Mm -hmm. like, they, they, like, like they got a job and they, got, and they got a man and they need the man. They need each other. I think it's because um, people don't really give their children much responsibilities. So when a lot of these girls grow up and they get a job, they think they're hot shit. Think, and it's I'm like, that's now. what you're supposed to do. It's like you want to brag about doing your homework. Like you follow, you follow the rules because you're under my roof. Mm. It's like, yo, that's that woman talk again. Mm -hmm. it, and when my mom said that to me A light bulb went off in my head I was like oh shit See that's when I had that That, that single mom thinking mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying Cause I was like yo She just made it so simple Just move out I'm like this is a money thing yeah. I'm like, I can make money mm -hmm. I can get money mm -hmm. So that's what I did I went and got money And I got my own place But here's the thing though It wasn't about that That's how the female mind is operating being there should have been about a lot more than just my mom was paying the bills you see what I'm trying to say oh yeah now if there was a man there then I would have understood this isn't just the fact that my dad pays the bills you see what I'm saying so where is the the upbringing Mm. Where's the learning responsibility? Where's the learning like how to move and operate in the world? Like how to do business, how to conduct yourself, you mm. know what I'm saying? How to interact with people. Like all of that other stuff is why I need to be respectful of the adults in the house. It's not just because they pay the bills, it's because mm. they're the adults. They have mm. the experience, they have the wisdom. And then on top of that, they brought me into this world. But my mother didn't mention those things. She right, just said, right, right. because I pay the bills is why you have to listen to me. And once I realized that, I was like, yo, you know what? I'm out. And that's what I did. And thank God I did that because yep. now I learned why you need mm -hmm. to listen to older people. It's mm -hmm. not just because they're paying for stuff. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah and it's so. funny you say that because, uh, like, like I said, I was my family, uh, my mother's side of the family was raised by single women. <laughs> All of us, even the men. So it's funny you say that because I had that same line coming from my guardian who was my uncle and i left at 17 because of it so i'm like i'll bet all i need is money to move out bet i'm out and that's, mm. that's it's really tragic when you don't have a strong man in the house or in the family and it's it's, it's not a good look and that should be affecting these guys bro because i dated a lot of chicks that tell me the issues that their brother has and it's just like damn you know that's when i really started noticing like how to not having the dad affects the guys and the girls because and the dudes be fucked up and it's not always about just not having a dad it can be about having a weak father no no yeah no, no. Well, to about. me that's the same thing that's, yeah. when, when i say that that's what i yeah that's it what is I say the that. same <laughs> thing right i agree with that i'm glad you said oh, yeah God, like dude you were useless you're invisible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh you my god hear. and they be letting the mom handle things and they be like you heard what your mom said it's like yo no, no, sitting no, on the couch no. being a lard ass while everything no. is getting brought big job of the hut Jump why the why are you want. letting like, Yeah you letting the mom Dictate the the shit Oh man But then the mom caters to you though Cause she understands That you're the, you're, you're, you're her mans But Man I tell you You're bro, not really I, a man I, it, See this is the thing Like uh, I've seen it You know what I mean mm -hmm. Because I could say I remember this girl In the ninth grade 10th grade And then I could look at her now With photo you see what I'm trying to say? So this, this is the thing. Like, uh, this, that's the perspective that you young guys can't have and that these young women can't have. So it's like when these women try to tell me, like, what they want and how they feel, and I'm trying to tell them, mm, you think that and you feel that now, mm. but uh, 10 years goes by fast and you're not going to feel the same way. And they're like, oh, no, I will. How are you going to tell me what I want? I'm just like, all right, because I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. I remember mm -hmm. the chicks in college. I remember the chicks in high school, and I see them now, and I'm like, <laughs> called it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I see, I see your Facebook post. I see what's going on in your world, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like, I, oh yeah, you used to date the Alphas. You used to date the captain of the football team. I'm waiting a few this more she, years so I can have that moment. Right, too. she used to date the dope boy. <laughs> yeah. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. You look at them now, and you're like, oh, that's who you married? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Because mm -hmm. that's not who was plowing you out when you were 22 21 absolutely not that's not the dudes that you were messing with so what happened there mm -hmm. uh-huh 
What happened? Oh, God. I don't need a man turning to I need a simp. No. And, it's, and, no. and so these girls are doing themselves a it's disjustice. More so, it's more so like, I, I don't need a man turning to I don't want to die alone. <laughs> I don't yeah, want to be alone. Right, but the only but the only dude that's gonna pick that slack up it's is simp. Yeah. the simp, yeah, and yeah. it's gonna be the worst but kind of simp. They're gonna admit it. They're gonna they're gonna be like, oh, he's such a great man. They ain't even saying that. They just. They're oh, just, I know a few. They, they just like fuck it. It is what I it is at few. this point because. I know a few. So much of the point is making it hard to give advice to one, to my sister because she's getting this weak <laughs> advice from this lady who's married to a simp, and I'm like, uh, whatever. Do you? Ruin yeah, but see, fine. the chicks that be telling you that are the chicks that be cheating on their simp. That's the chicks that be like, oh, you girl, you need to get a guy like this. It's like, yeah, so that you could cheat on him and do all this other side stuff. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, you, so you didn't tell me, like, what, 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 why is it that you were able to stay with your husband for, like, going four plus years? What's, oh, yeah, yeah, tell yeah, these yeah. guys they need to know something. Um, so, yeah, uh, I can't remember when the camera started rolling. So, yeah, I married my husband when I was 20 years old. We mm. dated throughout college. We've been, we've been dating since 20, I've known him since 2015. We started dating around mid-2016. And... Yeah, then I was like 19, and then about a year and a half or two later, we ended up getting married. And then, oh, it was just uh, being with him, I understood that he is, he graduated, uh, uh, what's, what's it called? Um, Dean's List, Dean's List, all four years of college. Mm. Uh, when we were, I worked in one kitchen with him. Um, and I got to see him in his element. Like there were days where I would come in on my day off just to watch him in the kitchen, cause like you could see he didn't he didn't have a title, but like he ran it. Like mm -hmm. you could see that he was training everybody. Uh, see what you I meant? See, like when About he's the the who have you led? <laughs> you could, when he's around his guy friends, like I could see that like they were all independent. Like my brother-in-law is his own dude. We would lose him, and it's a joke between all of us. So we were like, "Where's David?" Um, his his other his other friend was also very independent, strong guy, go his own way. My man, when when things happened, they all knew how to act and go separate. Ways. It wasn't like any like little. Mm. He, my man's a leader, and then he has a bunch of these useless little friends following him around. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was he's genuinely intelligent uh he's decisiveness seen, and problem solving yeah. skills leadership yeah okay all the all the good things he's he's not he's pretty cute he's got the height you know he has the the stature mm -hmm. um he's able to talk to me um one thing I, I give him a lot of credit for is i know i'm not easy i know i'm a Mm, I am the product of my mother. Um, I know I'm not an easy person and I know I have my days and I try my best. And a lot of the things that when I lose my temper with him, make a lot of things that come to mind is damn. He, he is so patient he with He controls you. his emotions. He doesn't. He does, and okay. he controls my emotions. He does what you were saying. When I start acting out of pocket, he shuts me down real quick, and then he'll come around later, give me a few hugs and kisses, like, "Hey, baby, what's up? Yeah, you good? Can I get some juice? Yeah, you're good. You're and good. I'm yeah, just like, yeah, you good? Yeah, I guess you're right. And then like, yeah, it's, it's, that's why I tell you guys, man, don't take it too serious, bro. When girls be acting up, you just gotta laugh at them sometimes. You're like, that's that's adorable. And like, that's, and <laughs> that's then, like, cute. And there have been a few times where I'm not gonna lie, where I thought like, oh, he doesn't care. I'm talking to a brick wall, da, da, da. but then I had to really realize I was the issue it's not yeah it's not that, he, that he doesn't care but he understands the difference between what you think you want and what you actually need so it's uh I guess the question is like where did he learn that but I guess that's besides the point because that's not necessarily how you know other guys are going to learn it um but it's just a matter of being conscious of these things but so you guys see that I'm not just making stuff up when I tell you these things you know I listen to what attracts women to the guys that they decide to be with and this is obviously not the first time I've had a woman tell you that it's she saw her dude in his element yeah so and if also you're, like you right. also have to be like willing to accept that you're wrong and I'm talking like mostly to the women like you're not perfect what your friends are telling you in your ear isn't always right and you always have to think about who's telling you what is yeah like why do they know like how do they right. know that is this person mm -hmm. giving you advice because they're happily married is this person giving you advice or because misery loves company their parents or exactly mm -hmm. one thing that uh, Kevin Samuel says that I really love and agree and ooh, I, I would tat it on my body if I were a little crazier um, single women keep women single like, oh for sure haters keep 
keep other people hating. Of like, course. You you and have you don't, that you don't, line you don't hear from the women with good relationships. The women that have good relationships, they don't. We quiet. They're not, recording. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not on social media. They We're don't have already time hated. to go we out We already have no friends. And, yeah, they're not, they're not there with it. A, a married chick that has time for girls' nights out and drinking wine with her friends and gossiping and talking shit, those are not happy women. Right. Married, listen, happily married women, they hang out with other Happily married women. They or do have double days. Matter of fact, you know what? <laughs> let me over. bring the bottle. Let me let me before we get out of here, we're gonna drop those two pieces of advice. Go ahead, get your pen and paper, write it down. Um, for the guys who are not in a relationship with a woman or they're just getting into one and the woman is not following, she's not cooperating, try this. Instead of trying to twist her arm to follow you because you don't first of all you shouldn't even have to like repeat yourself with women you tell them things you give instruction but if they don't listen to you don't try repeating it try showing it and demonstrating it so if you want a woman to follow you the best way first of all women aren't going to do what you want them to do they're going to do what they want to do that's why game is getting women to want to do what you want them to do not forcing them to do it not leveraging it not complaining not shaming them none of these tactics are going to work show them it's beneficial to their life exactly that's how you get a woman to do things make her want to do it because it's going to get the result that she wants so women want to follow when women aren't following it's not because they don't want to follow it's that they don't trust you they don't they don't believe you you need more people right they don't believe you you need more people so the way you get that point across is just what she was saying you lead someone else go lead some other men and then she will see that you can lead and then she will say i can let my guard down and i can follow him now because i don't understand what he's doing but i trust him Women aren't supposed to get it. They're not supposed to understand. They're not supposed to see it the way you see it. They're just simply supposed to trust you. So they either trust you blindly or they trust you because you've already demonstrated. If they trust you blindly, it's because they're young, immature, and inexperienced, which is fine as long as you don't drop the ball. Um, but a lot of these women are not gonna follow you blindly because they've been advised otherwise. They've been already told by society, social media, other women, they've already been told, don't trust you, don't trust men. So the way to get around that is to just simply demonstrate. If you demonstrate it, um, okay, boom, they're, they're gonna believe you. Now, the other piece of advice I was gonna give you is for guys that are already further along in the relationship. You've already been with your woman for some period of time. The way you cut out her spending time with her friends or her spending time with single women is you start making it your business to build relationships with other couples. So you need, if you're married or you're in a long-term relationship, you need to meet other guys that you like that are either married or in long-term uh, long relationships so that you can set up double dates. That's how you steer women away from spending time with single women, because women are social. If you got a good looking girl and you're not taking her out, you know, every once in a while, it's not gonna be good. If she looks good, Bruh, you don't want her showing herself off on social media. You don't want her going out with her single friends. You don't want girls' nights out. So you have to make it couples' night out. <laughs> Fuck. Give her a reason to wear a sexy outfit, a sexy dress. You have to. Give her a reason to do her hair and do her makeup. Because she's seen all these other bitches getting all dolled up. And they're doing it because they're single. And it's not so much that she wants to show off herself and get attention from other guys. It's just that it's in her nature. She just want to dress up. Right. Remember, <laughs> girls like that type of stuff. What do you think Barbie was about? Barbie was about dressing Barbie up and combing her hair or whatever. So that's already instinctually in women. Just like as a man, you should be finding shit to build and shit to fix. You should have the hobby of building some shit just for your own personal gratification. And you should be solving problems and fixing things around because it makes you feel good it's how you validate yourself i love a good broken thing to try to figure out how to fix um and just doing things like that also is an, another demonstration to, to a woman if you just meet a woman the first time you go to her place look for shit to fix look for things to fix and i know some of you are saying yeah but i ain't there i don't know how to fix shit do you know how to google <laughs> do you know how to put things in the search engine oh on, on youtube Okay, so if something's broken in a chick's house, take note of it. Don't say anything to her. Don't let her see you. Take note of it. Figure out what's broken. Then get on YouTube and find a tutorial on how to fix that thing. Take your punk ass to Home Depot and find that part. Ask other men that know how to fix it and then go act like it was you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Get another man mm -hmm. to tell you how to do it. Then you go over there and you act like you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Don't electrocute yourself or 
<laughs> don't, don't hurt yourself in the process. There's a power box. Remember to shut it off. Exactly. Right. <laughs> you, you flip the switch first. Um, but anyway, this is how you get pussy points, right? When I was growing up, me and my cousin had this inside joke. We said, yo, you got to get the pussy points, right? <laughs> right. You got to get the man points. And the way you get man points is by doing man shit. Mm. Right. Um, and it's always better when it's just like, you know, she accidentally observes it or something like that. It was, um, what's the word? Uh, candid, right? Uh -huh. That's what you want to go for, right? So I just, we gave you hella fucking game here. You're welcome, mm -hmm. right? Avoid girl nights out by doing uh, double dates, all right? Because um, women need to be social with other women, but you don't want her around the wrong type of women. You want her around women that are on your side. Um, and that's it, guys. I mean, I'm giving you plenty of shit, all right? Uh, so you know the deal. If you, you got any request uh, videos and topics you want me to discuss, um, email me about that shit. And um, stay tuned, man. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.